people are like Kansas. A blank slate upon which life makes. I heard a story, it was back in 1989, a pregnant drug addict roaming the streets of Detroit. This woman already had two previous children, but she wasn't even worried about the being inside of her. All she wanted to do was get high. She went into labor high, made it to the hospital, but the baby wouldn't wait. She delivered in the parking lot. Three years passed, and two kids later, the woman decided that she wanted to get herself clean. So she checked her and her three youngest children into a rehab in a center in Detroit called Hugs. That was the place where her children would watch her go from drug addict to recovering drug addict to the one-on-one -on -one sessions with the caseworker and the hallelujah good times in the rehab chapel. Her three children witnessed it all. Back in 1991, a cold wintry night on November 14th, I was born. Roughly 20 years later, I realized how awkward that actually is. It's November 14th is exactly nine months after Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> she wouldn't go back. So she wanted to give her kids the life that she never had. Oh, but that parking lot child had dreams that never even crossed his mother's mind. He wanted to do things that she had never even heard of and sometimes didn't know even what it was. He enrolled at Remus Robinson Middle School in a program called Reaching Higher. Reaching Higher helped him realize that he was a miracle and to help him realize that he had to live every day of his life with an awakened purpose. His mother still supported him, even kept some of her apprehensions to the side. That parking lot child became involved in everything, hardly giving his working mom a chance to see him in action. He enrolled at the Detroit School of Arts, and he became known as that forensic kid. He won multiple state championships. He student-directed plays and musicals. That parking lot child seems to have a high school career like in the movie or something. High school was a unique time in my life. It's probably the first time that I realized that people actually saw me as disabled. It probably hit them when they realized that my healing aid actually isn't just a really cool MP3 player. <laughs> yeah, but the, the most defining moment was the very beginning of high school. Due to many leg surgeries leading up to high school, I was in a wheelchair for my entire freshman year. Not ideal, but I rolled with it. <laughs> you know, one of the really unfortunate things about being in a wheelchair is that I was given an aid. And this was a woman who would help me with my everyday tasks, like carrying my books. Fortunately, having a 50-year-old woman watch your every move at school kind of hurt more than it helped. It's really awkward having an audience member for your first kiss. Aww. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but and then 
eventually I finally got out of the wheelchair and everybody sort of made fun of me because they said I walk funny. I told them it was my pimp walk. <laughs> <laughs> but my sophomore year of high school, I joined the forensics team. I became more comfortable and I started getting more and more friends. My senior year of high school, I even won prom king. And then there were those that said that I only won it because I'm disabled. But whatever. Hey, you're just going to hate. <laughs> When that parking lot child graduated high school, he had already surpassed his mother in education. Oh, but he was determined to go even higher. His mom had never dreamed of the life her parking lot son would lead. All she was worried about then was making sure her newborn would make it through the night with all the drugs that was in the system. He enrolled in college and he accomplished a diversity of things. He acted in the campus's theater troupe. He uh, he was, became a radio personality. He was even recognized as an outstanding mentorship by Student Affairs and Enrollment Management and a Martin Luther King Humanitarian. I am that parking lot child. And that woman is my mother, who by the grace of God has been clean for 19 years. Today, we are as close as a mother and son could be. As a result of high school, I joined the forensics team. That decision led me right here, Eastern Michigan University. I don't think I could have made a better decision. Fortunately, being 5'1 on a college campus gets you confused for a lot of things. College freshmen, touring elementary school students. <laughs> You know, but in my short time at Eastern Michigan, I got fully engaged with the forensics team. I write for my school paper and even joined a fraternity. I know, I am the poster boy for Greek life. <laughs> <laughs> See, stereotypes can be well. <laughs> and in my short time in Ypsilanti, I met a lot of people, tall people, short people, religious people, non-religious people, conservative people, smart people. <laughs> people that they are now. And for you, you only know the person that's on stage with you. And yes, that person is incredibly handsome. People are like a canvas, a blank slate upon which life makes its portrait. Our portrait? Parking lot. A rehab center. Asian American. I am a miracle. DSA. Frankenstein. EMU and this stage. If you want to understand us, you need to understand that every shade of person and every stroke of life's gentle touch painted the portrait that are us. Whatever people encounter, you never know. So if you must paint, paint kindly, paint gently, and of course, 